Hey guys, what's going on dudes? It is David here and we are back with another video. Now in this video guys, we're going to be giving you, well I'm going to be basically giving you my top 10 favorite Nickelodeon shows. Now when it comes to Nickelodeon shows, there are a whole bunch of different shows. There's Zoe 101, there's Jimmy Neutron, there's animated, there's live action. But it seems like Nickelodeon haven't been really doing good in their live action thing. So yeah, when, yeah. So I want to know your, I want to know your opinions down in the comments down below. What's your favorite TV show from Nickelodeon? Because I'll be doing a, a whole bunch of different ones. I'll be I'll be doing one for Disney. I'll be doing one for Cartoon Network. And for probably Disney, I'll probably actually do movies too. Because I'm really interested in telling you guys about that. And this is just a little bit of something very, very different than the NFL things that I've been doing. So please just, uh, um, please just subscribe. Smash the like button. Watch the video until the end. Because you guys will be shocked to see who is number one. So, let's begin with number ten. This is gonna be completely unedited, so you're gonna see everything. There's gonna be no pictures popping up or anything like that, so I just wanna tell you that. Number 10, we have Drake and Josh. <laughs> Had to burp. Drake and Josh. One of the best live action shows Nick, um, Nickelodeon has ever made. I would probably say it's probably top two, top three best live action shows Nickelodeon has ever made. And the other three, there's other candidates that could be in there there we have iCarly we have Zoe 101 we have Victoria so we have Sam and Katz nah that one's that one was just a joke but Drake and Josh is really a very very good show it's a comedy so a lot of people love Drake and Josh because a lot of people thought it was really really funny and if it wasn't really really good they wouldn't have given more than two seasons so that's that's just simple for it but I really really like Drake and Josh I just don't like him compared to the other shows I have on this list, that's why I have him at number 10. So let's move on from number 10 to number 9. Number 9, we have an animated series. Now, if I'm right, let me count this list real quick. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 animated shows on here. 5 out of five out of 10. So that means 5 animated shows, 5 live action shows, funny enough. So now, when it comes to Invader Zim, everybody knows Invader Zim is one of the best animated shows that Nickelodeon has ever had. And well, they had one of the best characters from Nickelodeon ever, and Gur. Gur is just so funny and so stupid. That's the point of it. It's stupid and funny. And from the moment they heard the first thing, the Doom song, they were just like, "Yep, I'm gonna love Gur." And Invaders and Zim is just fantastic. The they got the way they portrayed the character through the story, having Dib, Dib's sister. The father of Dib, and then having that movie on Nick on Netflix, it's, it's just been, it's just been it's just been really really exciting to be an Embarrassing fan. I'm not really that big of an Embarrassing fan, that's why I don't really have it up in my top five. But I do really like the show, and I like the show over over other ones. Now, when we get into number one, we're gonna do some honorable mentions that did not make it, and I know you guys are probably gonna recognize one that didn't didn't make it because I completely forgot about it. Number eight, Ned's the Classified School Survival Guide. This show taught you so much about high school, even though everything that was in the show, some of the stuff that they talked about in high school is true, but some of the stuff they taught talked to you about in high school is not. But in this way, it was like a comedy informative show. Then you had Ned, Susie, Cookie, and wait, sorry, Ned, Mose, and Cookie, Steve, and Susie was the guy, uh, the girl that Ned liked up until the final. Episodes where it seemed like Ned was gonna be with Mose, he eventually did get with Mose, and it was just it was just really really fun to watch Nessie Classified. If I honestly could, I would binge watch the whole show. Like I would watch one seasons one through four straight in one night because I that that is just dedication. I love Nessie Classified. I'm actually upset that they don't have those shows like Nessie Classified or Zoya One Hundred One or iCarly on Netflix or Hulu. But when it comes to other shows, they do have them on Netflix and Hulu, so that's why I watch them, but that's why I'm Nesda Classified. And number eight, number seven, this show is now on Netflix. It's one of the shows that controversially ended now. They've talked about bringing it back, and I'm really, really excited for them bringing it back because it really, really did not get, a, get its good ending that it did. Victorious. This show, when it came out, everybody, everybody, I'm pretty sure everybody loved it. But when it abruptly ended everybody was just like wait they didn't even get a goodbye episode they just ended it off with a random episode and everything just went away they started Sam and Cat which turned would then turn out to be very very good 
And everybody's just like, wait. I know one main point from Victorious that everybody wanted to say. Andre and um Andre and um jeez. What's Victoria Andre and Tori should have been together as a couple. Who knows if they if they bring the show back, that could possibly happen. But Victorious is at number seven. Let's move on to number six. Number six is gonna shock you shock a lot of you because everybody should know the show. Everybody should have watched the show when they were young. Rugrats. That I don't even need to go any explanation. Well, probably probably because I just uh, the shows that are ahead of this. I just really really like them more, and I lost a lot. I lost a lot of more of them than I did Rugrats. So that's why I have Rugrats at number six. But moving on to number five, we have the other Miranda Gosgrove show. We have I Carly. What's to say about I Carly, man? When I saw the final episode of iCarly, I was just like, no, because we're never going to see the show again. I have that feeling when shows end or movies end, like, and you won't see this movie again. I feel very, very sad because just like, this is the last time you're seeing them. But thankfully, actually, no, I can't say thankfully because iCarly is not even on Netflix or Hulu. Hopefully it gets brought on to Netflix. I would take, hey, take off Sam and Cat, bring on iCarly because iCarly is definitely better than Sam and Cat. But yeah, I currently is at number five. Moving on to number four, I'm not really going into the deep explanations with the show because it, you guys are you most of, most of everybody I've seen already seen the show, so they know what the show's about, and I don't really know to get like in description of the show. So number four, this one shocked me because I actually like the show very much. Very much, I like basically all the couples in the show. Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> From the movie, I'm glad they started off with the movie because if they had started off with the show and ended it with the movie, it would have made no sense. But they started with the movie. They see they wanted to see how people liked the movie or see if people didn't like the movie. The people liked the movie. They did a show. They did three seasons. They should have done the fourth. There was a plan for the fourth, but they canceled that. And now we don't know what's gonna happen because they they probably won't bring back the show because the technology that they were using back then for Jimmy Neutron is a lot updated than how. And if they ever do bring the show back, I just want one thing. Jimmy and Cindy to officially be a couple because season three, you could just see it. Season one through season three, you could just slowly build up to Jimmy and Cindy becoming a couple. And then season three is the last season. And you see Jimmy kiss Cindy on the, la on the last episode and you're just like, there's no season four. So you can't see what, you're like, what happens to Jimmy and Cindy? What happens with them? But unfortunately you can't see anything and yeah, that's it. Number three, we have Big Time Rush. This is actually a weird one because I know a lot of people don't really like this show, but I actually really, really enjoy it. I like all the couples that ended up being together. I love Kendall and Joe. I love Kendall. I loved Kendall and Lucy. James and James and Lucy, I'm not so sure about. Logan and Camille, yes. And then Carlos and, um, geez, I forgot the girl's name. He's married to her in real life. The girl from Spy Kids. I forgot her name. Alexa Vega, yeah, Alexa Vega, I think that's her name, yeah, that's it, that is her name, but yeah, I liked all those couples, the only one, I think there was only a few I really didn't like about the show, um, yeah, I can't really name anything, I mean, Carlos with one, one of the Jeffers, I never really saw any of that, because they were too ruthless, and Carlos was too nice, so, when it came to that show, I never saw anything happy about that, but I'm glad that they ended the show the way they did, you know, like, everybody's dream coming true, they, they played the song, they played their opening song one last time, and that's how the show ended. And I can't always watch it because it's on Hulu, so I'm happy with that. Now we move on to the top two. And I know there's one show everybody knows that everybody liked that I don't have as my top two, so I'm going to just get out of the way. Zoe 101. I'm sorry, I completely, when I was making this list, I completely forgot about Zoe 101. I probably wouldn't have actually, I probably would have had Zoe 101 at number 9 and taking Invaders out, or Drake and Josh out, because Zoe 101 was a really, really good show, but I don't want to go into that much description about that show. Number 2 is Avatar The Last Airbender. This show, seasons 1 through 4, going through, well, seasons 1 through 3, sorry, going through water to earth to fire, to Aang eventually becoming the full Avatar, Zuko becoming the Fire Lord, Aang and Katara actually becoming a couple, even though you can already see that from the first episode. It was just a great way 
the way the show was portrayed, all everything that happened, you know, like the battles that they won, that they lost. It was good. It was good to see that they didn't win basically every single battle because if they won every single battle, that would just been boring. If they lost every single battle, that would just been boring. So yeah, I'm glad the way they did it, and I'm glad every everybody ended up have, being happy at the end. But now we move on to number one. But before we get into number one, let's mention some honorable mentions. Now, obviously, there's two that I haven't talked about yet that are not in here, along with Zoe 101. Let's go through some shows that I have on this list that I did not pick as number one. Spongebob. Like the show? Don't really watch it anymore. That's the that main reason why. Fairly Odd Parents is a very, very good show. I think Fairly Odd Parents is the second, um, the best show Nickelodeon, the best kid-friendly show Nickelodeon time in the past 10 years. Um, Jimmy Neutron was number two, and Spongebob was number three, but Spongebob is the uh, one that's still going on. Max and Ruby, very good kid show. I, I, I watched a lot when, a lot of it when I was young. Chalksome. Another very good show. And I love the theme song to it, and yeah, that's what I like. My Life as a Teenage Robot, a very good show, who's on Hulu, and I can watch it, so, but it's not in my top 10. Rocket, Rocket Power. This show is an OG show that not many people really remember, but I do, and I really, really enjoyed watching it, so that's, and I'm just sad I couldn't get any of these shows in my top 10, but I had to cut it down. Another show, we have LT Grey, not gonna go into that, Back in the Barnyard was pretty decent in my opinion, Penguins of Madagascar. This is one of the most underrated shows I've, I've ever watched because it's really, really good. And then finally, another one we didn't have make this top 10 list, True Jackson VP. Speaking about all those shows, there's one show that I really, really enjoyed. It's just because it had a great theme song. It had a, it had an okay ending, but it had a great story through the beginning to the end and I think had the great the best story out of Nickelodeon shows in my honest opinion but I want to know your guys opinion down below but number one we have Danny Phantom I've heard rumors that there the are possibility bring it bringing the show back and I'm just like yes yes bring Danny Phantom back because the ending they had with Tucker becoming a mayor it was kind of weird but the ending they had with Sam and Danny becoming a couple completely fine with that the only thing I had a problem with is Tucker becoming mayor because that's kind of awkward Tucker becoming the youngest mayor ever and it, and it came out of nowhere because we really never saw anything building up to that besides Tucker helping save the world with Danny and Sam and everybody else all the ghosts that Danny caught so yeah that's my number one Danny Phantom but anyway guys I want to thank you guys for watching this video please just smash the like button tell me in the comments down below your favorite Nickelodeon show but anyway guys, I will see you guys all later. Peace.